You're going through migrating your monolithic application to microservices on GKE, but you've hit a roadblock. There are so many features and services in your application, and you don't know which ones you should migrate first. Stay tuned to find out more in today's episode of Get Cooking in Cloud. When you plan your migration, it's tempting to start with features that are trivial to migrate. This might be a quick win, but might not benefit your project the most over the long term. Instead of diving straight into the migration, you should spend time evaluating each feature and create a plan for its migration. And to do so, there's a list of ingredients that can help. Start with a business process evaluation. Don't forget that this will be a learning experience and there will be mistakes to learn from. So for that reason, the initial efforts should not involve business critical systems, but they should still represent a significant use case for the team to learn from. From a design and development point of view, you want to pick features that have the least number of dependencies and which are easy to refactor if necessary. And also, consider the cost and complexity of developing or refactoring as needed. From operations point of view, think about features that can afford the downtime of the cutover window. If you need to minimize downtime, migrating features that require high availability can mean extra work. And finally, choose teams that have well-defined processes to lead the initial efforts, because you want them to lead the way for this migration journey and understand that they will encounter new challenges for which they must find solutions. Taking all these factors into account, this recipe calls for divide and conquer approach where we find challenging but meaningful features. The ideal feature requires little refactoring, is stateless, has no external data requirements, and has few or no dependencies. Let's consider our friends at the Ice Cream Theory and their migration. Since they're thinking about a full migration of their website to microservices, a good migration order for them could be that they migrate the front end first, then think about the stateless features. Next could be the features with independent data sets, such as services that list their brick and mortar stores. And then finally come to features with shared data sets like the business logic of the platform itself. The platform front end, followed by any stateless features like a currency conversion system, go first because they usually have few dependents and often require limited refactoring because in the initial migration recipe, the backend API is still being served from the legacy data center or runtime hosted on premises or on another cloud. After stateless features, components whose data sets have no dependencies on other data sets, such as services to list the brick and mortar store, are the next to migrate. These are easier to extract and move to the modern storage system like Cloud Storage or Cloud Firestore for managed data storage, Cloud SQL for relational data, or Cloud Firestore or Data Store for the document-based NoSQL data. Finally, features with shared data sets, like the business logic of the e-commerce platform, are the hardest to migrate because of the requirements for consistency, distribution, access, and latency across the legacy and new services. Since data migration is not as simple, we are dedicating the entire next episode to it. Stay tuned. Well, there you have it. If you are looking to migrate a monolithic application to microservices, then you've got a recipe to decide which features to migrate first. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will learn about... The data migration strategies. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. If you would like to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.